Very interesting indeed. What's interesting? Well, it was your average Saturday night, and I was in a Discord call along with a bunch of you viewers. Somehow we went from listening to Cuphead fanfictions to theorizing about the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. After talking extensively about the Sheikah Slate, I had brought up a rather absurd theory of mine that had no real evidence to it. However, the events after that were rather... unexpected. Another fellow Zelda theorist had said something to me that was very... intriguing. And because of that simple group call, this theory may actually hold some ground. While Breath Episode 2 and the Mipha theory can both wait, it's time to bring up one of Breath of the Wild's biggest secrets. <laughs> There are those few theories people always ask me to do that, while I want to cover them, they just don't have enough information to do a full-fledged theory on. Sure, as much as I want to know who Link's dad is, the only information we are given about him is in a single memory where Zelda briefly mentions him. Lord of the Mountain? Well, besides it possibly being a tribute to Iwata, who sadly passed away in 2015, there isn't much information given to us on who this actually is. And then, of course, there's Cass's teacher. Who are they? Do they appear at all in Breath of the Wild? Huh. I just realized something. A lot of these theories with little information involve a certain individual's identity. I guess Nintendo just didn't expect people to overanalyze their video games about an elf slaying a giant pig, all for a piece of that personality. There! We can just leave it at that, can't we? And yet, once again, Nintendo may have actually put pieces of a seemingly impossible puzzle in the game that are hiding in plain sight. Cherry plain sight, you could say. Don't know what I mean by that? Well, you're about to. You see, one of those quote-unquote examples I gave in that opening paragraph is going to be the topic of this video. Because recently, a new vital piece of information has surfaced that was so important to the mystery that I halted the production of Wild Breath in order to create this video. And if you've been paying attention to the background music, you may have figured out what theory we will be discussing. And I, of course, am talking about Cass. More specifically, the identity of his teacher. Through the game, Cass does mention him quite often, and even talks about how he was in love with Zelda once you unlock his final song in Rito Village. However, there is no specific section of the game where you see his teacher. You never hear his name from Cass, so his identity remains hidden throughout the entire game. But, if we put together everything we know, it might be possible to come to some sort of conclusion. Get ready, because it is time to theorize. For starters, let's go over everything we know about this individual. To begin with, we know that Cass's teacher was of the Sheikah tribe. He was, and I quote, the court poet for the Hyrulean royal family. This individual was also in love with Zelda at the time and was jealous of Link. We also find out that while fleeing the Calamity, he witnesses Link sacrifice himself in order to protect Zelda from the Guardians. He then traveled and came across the ancient songs that would help the hero once he returned. And finally, we hear from Cass that his teacher had passed away several years prior to Link waking up. I remember before making my very first theory video of how I originally thought this was Ravali. The way he disliked Link came off as being jealous, and he was a Rito. However, Cass specifically stated that his teacher was a Sheikah, and there was no way for Ravali to witness Link's sacrifice since, you know, his goose was kinda cooked. So the first vital piece of information that can help narrow down our list of potential Sheikah candidates can be found in Memory 17, Zelda's Awakening. This is the moment that Link shields the princess from danger and is mortally wounded. According to Cass, his teacher witnessed this very scene. This means that out of these two Sheikah, there is a very good chance that one of them was Cass's mentor. However, starting off, there is a problem with this. Both Sheikah appear to be male, so it is impossible for Pyrrha to have been one of them. However, because Robbie was a male, then he could have been one of the Sheikah who witnessed Link's sacrifice himself. This means that if the mentor was anybody we have already seen in the game, it has to be him. Obviously, this wasn't nearly enough to prove anything, so I had done some more research. First of all, I noticed something else interesting about this cutscene. Notice the Sheikah soldier's eyes. He clearly is looking down, meaning he is probably looking at Link. The way his eyes focus on the fallen hero and stay there for the duration of the scene implies something a bit more... personal. His skin also matches the color of Robbie's more than the other Sheikah member there, so this is most likely the guy that ends up becoming Cass's teacher. Next, since Cass's mentor was associated with music in some way, I tried to find any connection to pretty much anything related to music. I searched everywhere in the Akala Ancient Tech Lab and was very disappointed when I didn't get any sort of results. However, I then remembered a very small detail that was added while talking to Robbie. Occasionally, he would do a dramatic pose that was followed by what sounded like an electric guitar and the screams of fans. I have to say, I was starting to get very interested in this theory. However, as far as evidence went, that was it. Not really enough to make a solid theory out of. I then completely forgot about this theory and decided to leave it alone. Jumped to a Saturday night in a Discord call with fellow viewers of mine, 
and we ended up theorizing on Breath of the Wild. For some reason, I decided to bring up this theory to them. I brought up the previously mentioned points, and then ended off by talking about Robbie's ancient oven. According to him, he named it after his first love, and that name was Cherry. At this point, there had been nothing significant about this information. Well, that was until my good friend Lorillian Historian said something along the lines of this in the call. You do know that the place Link fell a hundred years ago was named Black Cherry Plain in Japanese, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Were you expecting me to say something? I was just reenacting the long pause that followed due to my absolute shock because of what I had just heard. Because before this, there was no single piece of evidence strong enough to let this theory even hold a little bit of ground. But don't you find it a bit odd that the ancient oven Cherry that was named after Robbie's first love happens to be the same as the location where Link fell? And yes, just so you know, I did look at the Japanese name for the ancient oven, and it is Cherry-chan. The chan is simply a suffix used for a familiar person, so the name is Cherry in Japanese. And on the topic of translations, Black Cherry Plain comes from Kuro Cherry... Keegan? Higen? Eh. Kuro meaning black, Cherry meaning, you guessed it, Cherry, and then that third word meaning prairie, plain, you get the idea. Now, let me pause this and address something that people have most likely already commented about below. Because you know, why not just comment before actually watching the video? Yes, I do understand that there is the plot hole of Cass's teacher being dead. And while Robbie looks like he's near the end of his lifespan, he is, well, alive. I am fully aware of this contradiction, however, I'll be coming back to it later on in the video. We good? Cool. Now, since Cherry has become a very important piece of the theory, let's go over some additional information regarding it. First, we have the connection to Black Cherry Plain, the area that Link had sacrificed himself to protect Zelda. Robbie also says that this name comes from his first love. If this character is indeed Robbie, then this would have been the very last time he saw her. That would explain the significance of the name Cherry, as it represents him parting with his first love. One problem, however, is that Robbie says the following thing about the ancient oven. My first love. She shares the name of my first love. I even looked in the Japanese version of the same quote, and it said, My first love. The name of the young woman who was my first love. But it's unpopular with my wife. This quote pretty much says that the name of this girl was indeed Cherry. While this could completely bust the theory, there is a possible explanation for this. Remember, you are playing as Link. Back then, Cass's teacher was jealous of Link because Zelda had affection for him. He most likely thought that using her real name would have gotten kind of awkward. Plus, who knows how the wife would have felt if her spouse once wanted to get it on with Princess Zelda, if you know what I mean. I now take you to Robbie's Memoirs, a journal where he records important details and memories from his past. There are a few interesting things in here, However, there is one of importance that we can look at giving us more information about Cherry. Robbie talks about how he was finally able to give her a voice. Here's where it gets interesting. If we continue reading, we can find the following information. Quote, She spoke better than any machine I'd ever heard. It would have been hard to tell she wasn't a native Hylian. Unquote. Hmm. A native Hylian. You don't say. However, there is more to discuss about why this is plausible. Going back to more information about Cass's teacher, he apparently was similar in age to Zelda. So if this was true, then Robbie may have been around 120 or so. That only applies if this theory is true though. We also know that his hometown was Kakariko Village, and from Robbie's journal entries, it is very likely that he was also raised there. Cass even brings up the idea of visiting Kakariko Village while talking about the ancient songs in his diary at Wash's Bluff. It's the only town in the entire entry that he brings up, so perhaps it's because he had some sort of connection to the Sheikah there. If we continue through Cass's talk about his mentor, we find out that at some time Impa had talked to him, which resulted in him leaving in order to seek the ancient songs of the hero to aid Link once he returned. This brings up one of my biggest points. Why does neither Zelda nor other Sheikah bring this guy up? Remember, if Cass's mentor had feelings for the princess, then they must have been somewhat close. There even is a quote from Cass about this. He was well versed in ancient civilizations and surveyed ruins in the company of the princess. But the only people Zelda mentions in her diary that she met up with were Impa, Pura, and Robbie. And going to Robbie's entries show that the three decided to split up so they would have a better chance of finding Link once he woke up. Let's remember that all three had vital roles they needed to fulfill. If Cass's mentor was finding the ancient songs so that he could give them to the hero one day, he has equal importance to the other three. So why isn't he mentioned at least once? Well, probably because he is and I of course mean Robbie. In Robbie's journal entry, we see the following statement. This is when Robbie travels with Pura to Hattonau Village. Then we came upon Fort Hattonau. Link had battled an army of guardians there, and it was where he'd been defeated. A master swordsman such as Link, who impressed King Rome enough to be made Princess Zelda's personal knight. Well, even someone like that has their limits. I'm sorry, Link. I spent so much of my time researching the guardians. Even with all my knowledge, 
I wasn't able to give you the weapons or power you needed to succeed. Those were my thoughts as I looked upon the broken husks of the Guardians strewn around Fort Hatno. This entry shows Robbie's remorse for the guilt he has held onto for years. This entry is filled with so much emotion, and quite honestly isn't something you see from Pura or Impa. The pain in these words is so strong and implies something even deeper than what we are given. This could very well be an apology from Cass's teacher due to the jealousy and hatred that arose in his heart, which he now blames himself for. And you know what Robbie does the moment he meets Link? He makes him show his battle scars that he received a hundred years ago when defending the princess. So, where does that leave us? Well, I had first started this theory as a random thought, but thanks to the input of others, we were able to find some pretty solid evidence towards it. And while both the oven and location sharing the same name will come off as a coincidence to some, I see it as a pretty significant piece of evidence that, along with the other information given, creates a pretty solid theory. But now, I need to address one thing wrong with it and that is the apparent death of Cass's teacher. He doesn't talk about it that much in the game, but we do get the following quote from him. I was lost in the song written by my late teacher. He passed away several years ago. Unfortunately, we can't get a real specific time of death from this, but by reading the quote, we see that Cass seems very sure of his mentor's death. This is the only problem with the theory. However, I will give a few possible explanations for this. We know that Robbie would occasionally carry the blue flame from Tumlia Heights to the ancient tech lab. Perhaps when doing this, he would cross paths with Cass. However, once her son Grante was born, he started to do it since he liked getting the exercise. As a result, Cass would no longer see Robbie outside. Now, the chances of this are slim since Cass most likely knew where Robbie lived and assuming that he was dead instead of just visiting him would be a bit much. Here's a more plausible explanation. Cass knows that his teacher is alive but decided to lie about it. While this might sound like a bad thing, it would make sense. Robbie wouldn't want Link to know he was a teacher as he would most likely feel guilty whenever he saw him. And it's not like Cass has been fully truthful with the player in the past. During the entire journey, he is aware that you are the knight that accompanied Zelda, but he doesn't tell you this until you unlock the final song. Instead, Robbie thought it was best to forget about the past and start over, researching on Guardians in order to help Link in his mission while his student passes on the ancient songs, allowing him to redeem himself and one day save the person that he used to love. Oh gosh. I don't think I actually realized what I've just done. Does that mean that we're going to see a bunch of Robbie X Zelda fanfictions? Well, if you guys do that, please make it in the past. I wouldn't even want to think about them being together post-Ganon. Oh well, they're technically both over 100, so I guess it would work out. Anyways, thank you so much to those who are listening and helping theorize in the Discord call about this theory. This might be my new favorite one. Special thanks to Lorulian Historian for giving me that translation, because if not for that, then this probably wouldn't have made it into a video. If you also want to help theorize or just hang out in general, then my Discord link will be in the description. We got a really cool group, and we are always welcome for new people to join. I've been Nintendo Law Crisis, and I'll see you guys later.